Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. Today is Chibi Friday and I'm ready to start coloring this piece that we started last week. It's my new um, idea for how to approach Chibi Friday. One, an animal voted on by my patrons. They voted for Tanuki. Um, two, a verb to to uh, give some activity to the scene. Interestingly, I completely ignored. I forgot about my verb. Um, randomly chosen from random word generator dot something. The verb was talk, but I completely forgot about it. At least that the Tanuki's mouth is open. Maybe that was me trying to get talk in there uh, subconsciously, but I forgot about the verb. But three, a randomly generated noun to act as a prop. When I generated my noun this time, I got midnight. It didn't really feel like a prop, so I kept it, but I pulled another word and I got meat. And then I looked up the origin of meat, the word or the etymology, and it just means food. So I was like, ah, oh, I'm gonna draw all of these um, yummy, fruits and nuts, and that sort of gives emotion to the scene as well. Um, interestingly, when I showed this, I can't remember who I showed it to. I showed it to someone, maybe my sister, thought that the fruits were being generated, like coming up out of the tanuki. So that was cool because um, either way works for me. The idea here is to create chibis um, that are telling more of a story, that aren't just a caricature, but have some sort of story. And what that story is could be different depending on the viewer. Um, but the idea that, oh, someone could interpret it differently. Uh, I like that. So um, I actually added a little more ink work. I refined this big shadow on the bottom it was something that needed to be done off, stre off stream because it's so small. I mean, you can see it with my finger. It's so small that I had to just bend over it the whole time and like my face be right next to it to see it. And I, I don't want to live stream the back of my head. <laughs> I don't think that's interesting for you guys to watch. So um, yeah, I refined this edge. Um, and then there's the pointiness of this. And I think it did a little bit more elsewhere. Oh yeah, I added, I completely shaded in this inside part of the mouth. I'm really happy with how that, how that, it gives it more three dimensionality, I think. And then I noticed some more areas which could use um, erasing. So I took those on as well. So now it's completely ready, prepared for the next step, which is coloring with markers. Yay. I want to be careful when I color this because even though it's India ink, which is usually marker proof, like waterproof when it's dry, because there's so much ink, I found that it can still smudge. So I'm going to be extra careful. But even if that doesn't work out, even if I smudge the ink, it's going to be okay because I scanned this in and I'm in the middle now of making it a coloring page. So when I'm done with this, when the coloring page is done, I'll be able to share that and then anybody who comes across it can do their own colored version of this. So let me get my Copic swatch book. And I always wanna start with the lightest colors first. There's the swatch book. Um, my blanket on my chair is kind of falling off. Let me fix this. Ooh, a one piece, as in the anime manga, one piece um, lap blanket. So the chair is like mesh material, but it's kind of painful if I'm wearing shorts as I am today. So I always have this blanket on here. So when I color with markers, I always start with the lightest color first. So let's do that. Um, thinking about whether I should like focus on the fruits or focus on the tanuki. The tanuki do have very light fur when it's not black fur. 
is what I'm looking at. I've got my references. Uh, re I'm trying to give you an idea of what I'm seeing. So over here is my monitor that can swing around on an arm. And I have got my Tanuki reference photo. This particular one is very, um, like a almost brindle, if you know the dog fur pattern brindle. This this Tanuki looks like that. I want to get an idea of some other reference images and just get a general idea of what the Tanuki tend to look like. So yeah, this brindle pattern. I mean, here's a big. <laughs> this is adorable. Here's a dog pile of tanuki and they're a little less brindle they've got them almost like shiba inu kind of how it's generally a reddish brown but with little speckles of white and dark in there and and i don't know if that's just because they're young or what yeah okay yeah this brindle look Seems pretty common. So I will go with that. Let's see if there's a reference. Oh, here's a super fluffy one standing on a hill. I want one with the tail too. Oh yeah, I'll go back to the one that I was on because it shows the tail. Perfect. All right, so I think maybe I'll start with the, the fruits. So these are grapes. I wanna think about the different colors. Of the, for instance, the uh, grapes could be dark reddish purple, or I could go with green grapes. I wanna think about what's gonna be around it. Cause here's a pear, could be yellow, could be green. Um, a bunch of nuts here, so they can be different shades of brown. Banana might be nice because it's midnight, so this background is going to be very dark. Might be nice to go with the lighter version of the possible colors for everything. So I think I will go with green grapes. I learned in my uh, all these years making art, and particularly in my last three years of college before I graduated this past December, was that one's art tends to come out better if it has, if every decision has some meaning behind it, other than I just wanted to do it, or I thought it looked good, you know, like why? Why does it look good? Or why do you want to do it? And so I that helps me make decisions like this where otherwise flip a coin and okay, red grapes. But thinking about what the rest of the colors will be, then that helps me settle on a color choice. So green grapes, this is a um, fun cartoony kind of one. So it doesn't have to be super realistic, but I think for the initial color, I'll pick this really light yellow green 11 with the lightest colors first. Now let me check real quick. I want to make sure I turned my sign to on air. Yep, I did. I got the door sign on my studio door here so that anybody coming to look for me will know that I am currently streaming. Yep, it's already sort of uh, dragged some ink just now. So instead of dragging it across the paper for these little bitty things, at least I'm going to just tap it. The tip of the marker, I mean, tap the tip of the marker instead of dragging so that it doesn't drag the, the ink with it. Ooh, it's dangerous though, because I just accidentally tapped it directly on a line of ink and it pulled it. Hmm. Usually it's much more stable for, maybe I've been using it with watercolor rather than marker. Well, I'll just be super careful. There. 
That's all the grips. Oh, double check. That's those ones with texture on them are nuts. This one is a uh, strawberry. More nuts. Okay. Um, I'm gonna make sure to do my little swatches like usual. I wanna also this time because there's so many elements. Let's see. I'll use this pen. Not just mark down the color. Well, it's not the name indicator, the number. Um, but what is this item? Grapes. So that if I need a another, if I need a part three here, when I come back next week, I'll know exactly which colors correspond to which items. And then I guess I'll set this. I'm gonna put it so you guys can see. And then it'll get longer and longer, full of markers. Okay. Got the grapes, so let's do this pair and let's have a different color because it's right next to these. This is a kind of nice one, yellow green 21. Do the more yellow color pair. Yellow green 21. And there's two, that's a peach, that's an apple. Yeah, there's two pears. I'm just gonna do them the same color because there's so much fruit floating around. I'm not gonna try to keep track of two different colored all these different things. I'll even do the stem with this too. I'll just make the stem darker later. Unfortunately, it's picking up a lot of the ink as I go through here. gonna have to be very careful for the whole time I'm coloring this. And maybe I cannot use India ink. I have a strong recollection of it doing well with markers, but maybe I'm, it's been a long time, so maybe I'm confusing it with watercolor or something else. <clears throat> So this was yellow green 21. And this is pears. Next, I guess let's just move from top to bottom because most of these are pretty separate from one another. Strawberries, let's do the strawberries next. Is a night scene. I'll go with a cooler color. Cooler rather than, um, of course, like the standard idea, almost stereotypical strawberry is more in this range, but to get it looking cool from the, the cool toned moonlight. So I'm thinking I'll go with this crimson, but for the base color, maybe this RV 34. Red Violet 34. I like it when I'm doing markers during a live stream because it gives me a chance to get up regularly because my back is always so painful for sitting for too long. And when I have markers to get, get up and go get them every few minutes. Oh man, it's totally smearing. I don't know what to do. I might have to
Hmm. I'll keep thinking about it. Oh, it looks like there's another pair. Hold this closer. Yeah. Well, just since I started with it anyway, I'm going to finish this finish this stream with marker, but this ink is not marker proof at all. It is even tapping picks it up immediately. Uh, I might just do a shorter stream or something and um, what I'll do instead to finish coloring this one is use digital media and I'll stream from my big PC. Oh, Sarah! Hello! Need a shower, but I'll be back in like 20 minutes. Yay! It'll be so nice not to be talking to myself the whole time. Have a good shower! Okay, looking for more strawberries. I think I got them all three. Three strawberries. Oh, let's mark this. Mm. The thing that I don't actually like about digital is that the color options are virtually endless. <laughs> I actually like being limited. I mean, I still have at least 200 colors, but it's still it's limited compared to what is like millions <laughs> of colors on your computer. Uh, but I can't do this whole piece when it's like the ink keeps lifting up and then it gets in the tip of the marker and then keeps boop, boop, boop. So I'll just, uh, for the fun of it, and maybe practice, maybe I will at least use this as a reference. Oh, that could be cool. That's what I'll do. I'm going to salvage this by everything that I do today. I'll make another scan with whatever colors I got there and then I'll draw the colors out of here. Ha ha, yes. So hopefully I can get flat color down for everything today. And then I'll redo those colors digitally so that they are uh, like free of these little, here I'll try to show you what I'm talking about. It's so small and it's down there, I doubt you can see it, but right here, it dragged the color over and then the same thing is happening like in the strawberries where I have tapped the marker and then it taps those little dots elsewhere. Okay, I learned my lesson. I mistook which ink was marker safe, so I just need to always check before I ink it. Or like these could just always be digitally colored because I love I love India ink. It's so dark as it sits on top and that's probably why the marker is moving it along because it sits on top instead of soaking in so much. Like for example, the marker is soaking in. Oh, it's still blurry. Sorry about that. The marker is soaking in and so you can see it through the page, but you can't see this India ink because it's sitting on top and that's why it stays so nice and black crisp. Even when you erase the graphite away, it stays. I'll think about it. It'll be good to have a variety anyway, because I am intending any of these that turn out really super good, then I want to put them in my portfolio as examples of spot illustrations I could do. Okay, so figuring out things. That's also why I like physical media because it forces you to be creative, creative problem solving. Anyway, <laughs> I found another grape that I missed. It's right behind this peanut. There. Now let's write down this red color. I don't necessarily have to keep track of these anymore, but just for habit's sake and strawberry. Next, I guess let's pick a green for the little leaves on top of the strawberry. So, yeah, these are warmer, so we'll go with this. Mm. Yeah, let's do 
G09, green 09. It's been a while since I've streamed um, any digital art, so that'll be fun and different next week, next Chibi Friday. But I really like it. My own line work is giving me um, Dr. Seuss vibes. And I don't mind at all. This is, oops, on a big swatch. Boop, there. Love how these, love how the rainbow of the Copic markers starts coming through. <laughs> G09. Strawberry greens. Next, so I'm kind of saving the all the nuts for last. I'm gonna stick with the category of fruits right now. So let's pick a color for the banana. I want a different color than these pears so that it's, they're overlapping right there. So I don't want them to be too close. But I'm also still thinking about the idea that everything will be a cooler color because it's nighttime. So let's see. Oh, this acid yellow is nice. But then again, it's a pretty bright, so maybe this cadmium yellow would be nice to start with. It's a little warmer, but it doesn't seem as um, sort of neon. So I'll go with that. Y15. Y15. Now, I suppose if. I get done coloring this before my normal stream time, streaming window is over, I suppose I'll just end early so that I could have some extra time to scan this in and enter it into my computer so that it's ready to go for next week. Yikes, the ink is just going all over the place. I don't have to color in the whole thing, but it is nice practice. Especially for these small things. It looks quite different to me. Maybe from down there you can't see. The banana and the pear look quite different. That's why I like to have a huge variety of color options in my physical media. So when you have two yellow things, it's easy to pick two different yellows so they don't look the same. Y15, this is banana. Banana! Okay, so going down, the next fruit I see is the peach. So obviously we want a peach color for the peach. And I'll do the same thing, going for the cooler, cooler pinks. It's kind of hard to pick. Um, because RV11 and RV32 look really close. This one looks a little dingier though, so I'll pick the RV32 instead. There it is. Maybe I'll just color a little less carefully and avoid, try to avoid the ink 
all together. Because the reason why it's smearing is because it's getting sucked into the tip, so I don't want the ink to be stuck in there anyway. Right, next time I use it and then it makes it dark mark, and I'm like, why? Not a Harry Potter dark mark, by the way. A literal dark mark on the page. Ah, this is like a perfect peach color. Nice. Okay, here's the next one. My picture is getting out of control. <laughs> it's getting under the markers. Don't do that. Okay, peach. Peaches. Well, everything else is plural, but bananas wasn't plural. I put an S on there to fix that. <laughs> Peaches. This is RV32. This is kind of cool too. I thought that, oh, if someday in the future I'm like, oh, what was that color that was perfect for peaches? I'll be able to look at this and find out. Next fruit, kiwi. Those are actually kind of brownish, like a greenish brownish on that outside fuzzy part. Let's get over to this, like, oh, this. This is the color. Oh, it's a Copic Chow. I'll have to find it. Y20. This is like the exact color I'm thinking of. Y28. I believe it's over here. Not that you know where I'm going. <laughs> I went to the left instead of to the right. Yeah. Yellow 28. It's in my, um, Copic Chow Jewel Tones set. Whoa! Where are you going? Didn't hold on to them. <laughs> I just want this goldy one. Okay. There's either... So I'll use the brush tip. The markers are different, not just um, in that these ones are round and these ones are square, but they come default with different brush tips or different tips too. This one has a brush tip. These ones have bullet tips and chisel. Bullet tip and a large chisel. This one has a medium chisel and a brush tip. There's two more in here. This one down. I'm gonna make sure to write that it's chow. I'll keep this one on this side. It is yellow 28 chow. And that's for kiwis. Next fruit, apple. So I want to do a Granny Smith, keeping with the idea of cool color stuff. But I want it to be different looking from, well, these are yellower, so that's all right. Different looking from the grapes. So grapes, I use the yellow green 11, which is this one. So for the apples, maybe I'll go with, yeah, this has got a good Granny Smith gr vibe, yellow green 23. Back, how's the stream going? It's going good. I don't know if you heard, but I, I realize this ink is not working with the markers. Luckily, I already scanned it in, so we're all good there. So next week. I'm going to take the colors that I used here and then I'm going to just digitally redo it. So I'm just going to do flat colors today to get the base colors that I want and then finish it up digitally next week. I was sure that this ink would work well with markers, but I'm totally wrong.
But it's all right, because I don't have that much chibi digital artwork anyway. I have done them before, but I like physical media so much that I'm thinking of these as what, how will they look in my portfolio. So it might actually be a blessing in disguise because now I will have a digital piece to put a new one to put in the chibi section of my portfolio. Uh oh, is it smudging? Yeah. It's like any time I touch the ink, it gets sucked into the tip and then it gets transferred wherever I put the tip next. So yeah, this is not working. <laughs> So I'm even trying to avoid touching the ink at all, since this is now just going to be like a reference sheet, so it doesn't have to be perfectly colored or anything. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's see, Yellow Queen 23. This is for the apples. Hopefully I got all the apples. I think I did. Okay. How are things going for you, Sarah? I don't know if you got my letters yet, but I've finished another backlog of letters from you, so. And I've been drinking tons of the nice little tea bags you sent me. Let's see, as far as the fruit goes, I think the only thing left is this big old pineapple. So first we need some green for the leaves. I think something like this would be nice. I'm already open on the page, I think. Oh, but maybe this one. A little more vibrant. Oh, but I want it to be different. Is there a blue, bluer one? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, but I don't have a keyboard. Hmm. Hmm. So I was thinking that maybe a, a blue or green might be nice to differentiate it from these greens that we've got going on. Ah, that's way too blue. Oh, maybe this Nile green. So these ones are just so dark. These are what I'm thinking, but they're just so dark. Oh, what the heck. Not that big of a deal. I'll go with this one. Green 07. Green 07. G07. Doing okay. Haven't written to you that much compared to how much I was, though. Oh, well, that's okay. I mean, if you want to write and you can't, then that sucks. But if you're tired of writing, then of course you should just take a break. Just do whatever you feel like doing. Ah, <laughs> never tired of writing, just been kind of blah. Ah, well, sometimes it's all right just to be kind of blah. But if you don't want to be, then I hope that you feel better soon. Let's see. And this has got a real tropical color palette going on over here. Wait, what am I doing? Wrong thing. G07. This, and this is for pineapple greens. Now I need so it's, I think it's like a kind of golden brown for the outside of the pineapple. Not as yellow as the inside. A definite brown brown tint. This is an idea, but it's still a little, it's kind of pumpkin-y. Maybe it's because I'm seeing it next to these, definitely. Nah. Mm -hmm. eh. This might be nice. Yellow 26. Yeah, I'll go with that. Yellow 26.
kind of hard not to touch the ink in this pineapple because there's so many little lines here. Let's get the overall idea. It also helps me differentiate between like, this is not pineapple, this is a walnut. I'm making a roadmap for myself for coloring this digitally next week. I'm gonna have to move this sticky note with my, I'll put it on the back. The sticky note with my notes about what went into this. There. Okay. Got the pineapple pretty good. Yellow 26, pineapple. Okay, I'm done with the fruits. Time to move on to the nuts. I actually wanna bring up a reference image specifically of these nuts because they're actually quite different shades of brown. Let's see, I gotta walk over here to my keyboard. Oh, I forgot to say in shell. Mixed nuts in shell. And of course it's gonna bring up a bunch of shopping. I just want images though. Ah, oh, yeah, this is perfect. This has everything. Walnut, almond, hazelnut, it doesn't have peanuts. And well, that's because peanuts aren't technically nuts. Mm. I think they're close to the walnut color though. I'm glad I looked it up because the walnuts are much, um, they're more like what I think of tan, and then the almonds are more like a yellowish color, and the hazelnuts are much more red, like almost like a pumpkin orange color. And then these other reference images, I'm seeing lots of them, sometimes it looks red, almost like an acorn. Okay, so I've got an idea of the different browns. So let's go to the earth tones in my swatch book. So the reddest will be hazelnuts. So these are so similar. This looks like the coolest one as far as like a cool color versus a warm color. So E07 I'll use. E07. Okay, which ones are hazelnuts? Aha, uh -huh. I put these lines on them. They've got a sort of triangular shape and they're also light on the top and the bottom. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one. Oh, and here's another one. There. Hazelnut. E07 hazelnuts. Okay. The peanuts, I think I might do them the same color as the walnuts. Because all the peanuts are up top and all the walnuts are down bottom, so there won't be any overlapping ones. And I'm pretty sure they're fairly close in color, so I'm just gonna have to I'm just gonna do that so that it's easier. 
and you're just picking colors or are you still going to try with the smudgy ink? I decided to just pick colors and then I'm coloring it in as much as I can without touching the ink just for like the practice of coloring with markers. But yeah, I'm like building a template. I figure when I'm done with this, like done with the, today's stream and if I, as long as I'm able to, well, who cares? Uh, whatever I'm able to get done today, I am going to scan it in and then I will be able to pick those colors um, with the eyedropper in Photoshop and recolor the lines which I have a digital copy of already and then there won't be any smudgy ink <laughs> in the final version. So yeah, I'm not going to take this all away, just going to do a f one flat layer of color, just a base color, no shading or anything. So the, the walnuts, I'm not really seeing what color I want. Hmm. Guess it's closer to something over here. Fairly light in color. I'll go with this E33 sand. E33. And I'm just going to do the peanuts and the walnuts in the same color. Uh, that's an almond. And these two are walnuts down here. Is that all of them? Almond, 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 almond. Yes. Okay. E33. Peanuts and walnuts. All right, one more, one more thing left. The almonds, they are the most yellowish of the browns. if I'm seeing what kind of color I want. Maybe I'll go to the actual yellows. Then again, having it being from the earth tones, I didn't use any earth tones in the fruits, so it might be good. Yeah. I'll just pick whatever's closest. So, probably... This E53. Because it also seems to depend on the writing, the, the writing, the lighting in these reference images. Some of them are very warm and that's what makes it look really yellow. And then some of them seem more natural, like sunlight, a blue or sunlight kind of lighting, and it's not really that yellow. So it's definitely lighter than the walnuts. So that's what matters more, I think. So I'll just go ahead and use this E53. It takes a long time, a long, lot longer to like, explain something that the, normally gets decided in my head in like a split second. Everything what I just explained <laughs> normally just goes through my head and like, okay, yeah, boop, and just pick it up. Since I'm live streaming, I like to explain what I'm doing, and then maybe it gives anybody else some ideas or something, or just fun to know what I'm thinking instead of be a bunch of silence. Oh, I didn't actually make a mark with this one to keep track of my colors. Okay, this one's an E53. 
This is for the almonds. Okay, almonds. Okay, I'm done with all of the food. So next I guess I'll move on to the tanuki. Go back to my tanuki reference photo. Since I decided to use this one reference photo, there seems to be three colors of fur. Black, brown, and white or very light, very, very light creamy color. So I might actually use some of these same colors from that. I use for the nuts. Oh, this I think this might be good. And then I could use this color, which is very dark but not a hundred percent black. Although it really do, the fur really does look black in this picture. But it still might be nice, and I could show some shading on it. But I want to start light to dark. So if I do use this for the black fur. Yeah, and I like that idea because this big mark here is meant to be a big shadow. A shadow is just the absence of light, and so that's more close to true black than um, fur on an animal, which I found like even a completely black cat, he lays down in the sunlight and he is brown. Not black at all. So I think that this would be good is use this earth tone for the black fur. So if that is the darkest fur, comparing that, I'm looking at the reference image now. It's like a warm orangey, but the lighting is cool here because it's going to be nighttime. Maybe. Yeah, I'll go with this one. It's E37. So get out. Oh, but I need to pick my... Well, I'll get these two out. So it's E49 and E37 for the darkest and the middle one. 37 and 49. And now I want to pick the lightest fur, which really is practically... And it's just, it's like super creamy. It's like a, maybe not this dark. Maybe I'll go with this one, E41. You can barely, there, and now you can see that it's, yeah. I like that one. So E41 for the lightest fur. Oh, my thingy did not come back. There we go. I don't understand this camera. It's the more advanced version of the one I had before, so it's definitely way better in most respects, but the autofocus, I'm like, why? Why does, why? Sometimes it refocuses down here. Maybe it's because there wasn't much motion. I'm gonna start keeping it. Uh, no, I've had times when I'm like coloring and there's motion, I don't know. I just gotta keep an eye on it. Okay. Now, this creamy fur on the face is here, and it's just like a big patch, not really mixed with anything else. So to begin with, we're going to be very careful of these huge patches of India ink. Filling this in. Or mapping it out, maybe might be the better way to describe what I'm doing. Mapping the color. There. Other places, the insides of the ears, the innermost fluffies coming out, seem to be pretty, um, what's the word? There's no other fur color, relatively. <laughs> And then, there's eyebrows 
here. Well, I mean, they look like eyebrows to me. It's just patches of fur that make this kind of shape look like an eyebrow. That's mostly this creamy color too. body is very hard <laughs> because it's got the, the fur is way more intermixed with these three three different main colors but it seems like closer to the belly is a little more of that middle color than up on top and the sides is more of this creamy color so put that along here Then it goes down onto the tail some too. Okay, that's good to start. Mark this color down. I need to keep my pen over here. I keep reaching for it over here and it's not over there. E41. Light fur, I will call it. So many colors already in the fruits. Yeah, I really like the. I was already trying to get different shapes and stuff when I chose which fruits to put in there so it wasn't just a whole bunch of apples or something. But now with the colors in there, hey, yay. It's coming to life, even with the smudgy ink. Okay, Tanuki, mid color. Where is your mid color? From the ears coming down to the sides of these eyebrows. Oh, there's a cat hair on the end of my, or some sort of pet hair. There. <laughs> there. And it sort of goes up into the ear as well. Other, other side. It's kind of hard, I think. Okay, so it's got this, this masky part is black. There is a little bit coming through though. So we'll just do little marks like that to show. Oh! this be black or would this be I think this would be black I think this would be creamy there now all of this middle color shows up more in the tail not going to do the whole thing. This is mostly just for reference for when I do it again on the computer. It seems like, at least on this particular tanuki, that the black fur even goes underneath. Oh, and down the muzzle And around it too. Like in a, how is this? It's like it comes out like this. Marked, and this is black, and this part up here is black. This particular tanuki is quite grizzled. 
looks quite grizzled. So maybe I'll actually go to another one to get some other ideas because I'm not looking at one, just one specific tanuki. I'm looking at a whole bunch of different examples. <laughs> this adorable dog pile of tanuki. So cute. She's so cute. So I want this to be black. This is brown still. Oh yeah, these ones have a black. Ah, oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay, so I've got around the ears. Okay. I think I'm good for this color. This one is E37, and it is for the mid fur, I'll call it mid fur. Now, finally, the darkest fur, definitely on all the legs, which only two are visible in this picture. Definitely comes down to like their front rough area is this black fur color as well. And this comes down the forehead, dark stripe. And there's a dark rim around all these ones that I'm seeing this tanuki pile. Comes down the back of the head. And the belly as well. Dang, this picture is extremely cute. One is like got its head all tucked in and the ears are all squished up like this because it's all tucked into all its neighbors. Oh yes, and then the part that makes everybody want to call them raccoons, this mask on their face is dark. And it goes around the eye. What exactly is a tanuki? Well, it's a native to Japan canine, and that's a big difference between a raccoon, even though they have such similar fur patterns. Um, so it's a kind of wild dog. There's a, a lot of the English translations, if they try to make an English name for tanuki, will be raccoon dog because it has a fur pattern similar to raccoon, but it's definitely a dog. And when I was looking up the reference images, you can tell if you look at the hands, raccoons seem to have almost human-like little hands with like fingers and a, like a thumb. But Tanuki is definitely a dog. It has a dog paw, like, has round, round ears, kind of like a bear. But, like, when I'm looking at the muzzle here to see the colors, it's just like a dog, how dogs, no matter what other color they have, well, unless their nose is actually pink, but if they have a black nose, then they always have this black fur, like, right here. So, it's like a... I don't know what its closest genetic relatives are, but it's definitely, like, more like a dog than a raccoon, if you ignore the fur color <laughs> but if you look at the fur color it's like oh it's a weird raccoon because they are very very similar in that respect but i think it's probably kind of how 
if you look at piglets of like a wild boar and then you look at the, I don't know if they're called piglets, but the babies of, um, oh, what are they called? I love them. Tapirs, T-A-P-I-R-S. They both have this like spotted, they're like the cutest thing ever. But then when you look at the grown up version, like it looks quite different. It's like tapirs have like three fingers on their, on their feet. I don't know if you call them hooves because they've got like fingers, but boars obviously have like a cloven hoof instead. I'm like trying to make animal feet with my hands. <laughs> I've done four different animal impressions with my hands, animal foot impressions. Okay. So I don't know if I will want to, I think I'm going to make this a lot darker, but yeah, because the eyes are definitely dark brown. And when I look at this nose, it looks like the leathery black of pretty much any dog. But for now, it's pretty much the same color as this fur, so I'll just color it in the same too. Even if I change the color later when I'm doing the final version. Can it breed with dogs or is it like a fox and totally separate species? I'm pretty sure it's like a fox. Like now that you mention it, I bet you foxes are really close because they're similar sized to foxes. So that might be a really close genetic relative. It's kind of like the different, I think it's, I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but from what I know, it's kind of like, you know, how a wolf and a fox is different. So a tanuki and a fox is different. So this is the uh, dark fur. Okay, sweet. Mm. So all that's left is the the eye color. But I think I just use the same light light brown color. So when we look at the pictures, it looks similar there too. We've got so many colors going on already. I don't think we specifically need eyes. Specifically need a stark different color because the treatment of the highlight and shading will make it look different anyway in the end. So I put plus eyes on my notes here. Mm, so the tongue and then I think we'll be done with coloring the tanuki well mapping the color on the tanuki tongi 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 so maybe I will do this so unlike all the other reds I chose I chose specifically cooler colors because it's a night scene but this is the mouth so it's going to be warm in this tanuki's mouth so and make it different from the the fruit colors i'm going to pick let's see i think in, yeah i'll do i'll make this darker one uh, wait what if they have dark tongues oh i need to go look i don't know if they have dark tongues or if they have is there one with a Tongi out. Tongi Tanuki. Scrolling through this bunch of photos. She searched Tanuki photo. Oh, they're pink. Excellent. Actually, pink, pink. So maybe I'll actually do this one. Well, this one's kind of nice. Ah. Uh, that's too light. Okay, I'll do this one. R22, and it's a chow marker, so let me find the one that it's in. Ah, this is it. Huh, this is all. 
on a second. This bothers me. I like my stuff to be in order. Because <laughs> it's listed, so I'll show you why. It's listed on the bottom. It has the, uh, well, at least on the pens. It has the number. So, uh, okay. This is out of order because we used this set on 4th of July. We did a bunch of add-on drawings, me and my family. So we passed around notebooks and kept adding on and adding on to make really wacky drawings. And so these got out of order from four different people using it there. Ah, oh. so nice. In order, this is the color I want. <gasps> I tried to fly away, but I stopped it. R22. Let's see. Is this brush tip side? Oh, yes, that's nice. Okay, good. That's a good color. Oh, let's do a little swatch. Sweet. R22. Okay, so the tanuki itself, I've got the colors mapped out to, you know, it's good enough. Including the, here, I'll lift this up so that you can see more closely how it's looking so far. So there's not actually that much left. I might end a little early today so that I can uh, take some time to scan this in and have it ready for next week. But there's still uh, three colors to decide. The color of the moon, the shadow on the moon, because it's a crescent moon, and the actual sky background, which, I'm thinking about it, I might do radiating different colors. I might actually choose several colors to be the basis for a gradient that I'll add to show that the moon is shining. So it'll be lighter closer to the moon and then as it goes away, it'll get darker and more blue. So let's start with the moon itself. Classic moon color is yellow, but I find that when it's not full, it seems more silvery and especially the light falling on the, on the earth always cast this really strong blue tint. So I'm going to go for a little more silvery, silvery looking moon. Maybe even go to, flipping through here, just go to my grays, see if I like any of what I'm seeing here. Hmm. So now, even these warm grays, i hold them up, are still pretty, I mean, it's still gray, so, this toner gray, so that shows you, it's still quite warm compared to, like, the toner gray, and definitely compared to the cool gray, the completely opposite side. So I'm going to do warm grays for the moon and the shadow, and then I'll do... Well, I'll start there. So for the moon itself, I want it to be pretty bright. So I'll go with the uh, W1, warm gray number one. And then for the shadow... So I always like when I look up at the night sky and I can actually see the shadow. Like it stands out. I think... I'm imagining it. I think it stands out darker than the rest of the sky. Probably because... That's a shadow on the moon, and then but the rest of the sky is illuminated by the moonlight itself. So uh, I'll do W1 and W8 for these two. Warm gray one. And of 
course, nice thing about digital, if I end up not liking this color or any of the colors, I can just really quickly change it. W one moon. Use the chisel side for this because it's a pretty big area. I didn't notice it until I colored it, but I feel like it's kind of echoing the circle light and dark. And this is kind of a circle with light and dark. Yay! It's nice when stuff turns out that way. You didn't necessarily... Oh, I didn't make a swatch. You didn't necessarily consciously do it, but it ends up that way after all. Okay, W8. Moon shadow. Now for the sky, I want it to be, I'd like it to be blues, but maybe I could just juxtapose the cool grays. You know, worst case scenario, I can try it, and if it doesn't seem good, I can change it when I do the final version. Cause these, all these blue options are pretty, like, very vibrant. Not as much like a night sky. So yeah, I will just try that. So cool gray, what, what colors? still night so I think even the brightest part should still be pretty dark I'll start with oh well maybe I'll start with c5 okay I'll start with c5 I'll just get all five out I don't normally do all of them. I usually skip one, do five, seven, nine, or whatever, but I'll get all of them out so that it's like a nice smooth gradient. Oh, since I'm starting with five, it's actually six. to escape. Don't do that. Sort of broken coloring is kind of nice in, in its own way too. Okay, the areas Super close to the moon. It's gonna be this brightest color. And then I'll do one ring out farther just to indicate that it's meant to be a gradient. Sky. Okay, C6. Filling in the space in between the two marks of C5 that I did. And doing the same thing. Line out circle showing that it's a gradient it's not that even but it doesn't matter 
It doesn't need to be perfect or anything. It's just a map. C6. C7. Filling in this next circle. I'm gonna be careful not to get too excited because it's such a big space. I want to be like, yay! And <laughs> I don't want to color in one of these teeny tiny areas with like a little grape in it or something. Once you cover up a lighter color with a darker color, that's that. And then another ring even farther out because as the gradient goes out, it's going to be even more, more space between each color as it goes. So I might not even get to this C10, we'll see. Yeah, I don't think, maybe, maybe we'll come around here. I think that's it. So just, yeah, I think we'll only get to C9. Oh, I didn't make a mark for this one. C7. So now the huge area is gonna be filled in with this. C8. This is kind of cool effect. I'm just doing it to get the color down and have an overall idea of how it's looking, but. Very close to that almond right there. Okay. Oh, I'm right here. One last. Oh, wait, this is C8. One last color. We're not even going to make it to C10. C9 to fill in this little spot right here. like some I guess it's dry there's like a big splotch right here I don't know where that's from not from this time oh good okay let's watch this one C9 oops Here's a look up close at the final mapping. Didn't expect that this is how I would be spending this live stream, but. It took this long just to do a basic mapping of colors, so I wonder how long it would. Oh, wow. This has bled straight through. I'm gonna have to clean my desk. On my desk here. I can sort of see right here. Hmm. And we'll use the C10. What 
kind of surface is the desk? It's a, um, it's like a rubber mat thing. Well, it's not rubber. It's like a plastic mat. Cause this is a, um, it's like my father-in-law's drafting table, I guess from when he was an engineer. And there were all these like cuts and stuff in it. And I was like, I need it to be smooth. <laughs> so I got one of those big mats that you can put on like a, they're usually marketed to dining room table so that it's, you know, protects your table, but you can still see the beautiful wood or whatever. Or it makes it easier to clean or, you know, stuff like that. But I was like, oh, that's perfect. Because I like the white desk. Uh, I want it to be smooth and but yeah, it, this material holds on to marker stuff. I got, got some permanent marker, like this spot right here, and there's some other ones, is from permanent marker that got on there, and it, you just can't get it out. Well, it shows that it's been used, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's an artist desk, so it's just gonna, it's gonna show its uh, battle scars. <laughs> oh, there's a little, another little hair. There are always little surprise pet hairs in my art supplies. <laughs> oh, well, it's half an hour early, but I think I'll stop here. And then I can use that half hour to get this scanned in and get it ready for next week. So that I don't have to spend any time on stream doing this. That's not very interesting. Um, yeah, so I'll do one last. One last look at it up close. Come on and focus. There we go. Got all the base colors picked out. And then I'll just redo them all on Photoshop next Friday. And I imagine it'll take me a couple streams because with digital work, it's so easy to get really into the nooks and crannies and it just takes longer because of that. <sighs> That's it for today. I'll be back next week. Thank you for watching.